Welcome CSE 121. This is a very quick exercise called EX23 Baseball Text, and we'll be using some more string methods and some list methods. And it's going to be about baseball, which is great because we're just starting baseball season, except for the global pandemic, which is keeping that from starting. But I'm going to log in to my regular student replit account, just like you would. And then you're going to go over here to students. And you're going to click on our classroom. You're going to see an assignment for 23 baseball text. And just so you know, there is a there's a handout, a regular PDF handout. And it's real short. It's not a whole lot on it. So again, this shouldn't take too long. So if you like using this, or I, I've also been I've also been putting the instructions right in here. If that helps, I guess I'll wait and see if you guys like that or not. But here are the instructions, and there's not a whole lot. But the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to search something. So I'm going to go in another tab here, and I'm going to search Baseball Ipsum, I-P-S-U-M. So you might not know what that is, or you might. And it's Lorem Ipsum, which is just kind of uh, placeholder text, but this will be about baseball. So I'm going to type Baseball Ipsum and see what comes up. There should be one that looks like that. It should be the first one and it'll say baseball ipsum. You might see something called lorem ipsum, which is kind of placeholder text. But anyway, go here. And then what we're going to do is generate some text. So we're only going to make one paragraph here, and it'll be different each time you do it. And they also have a bacon one, but we're, <laughs> we'll do baseball for now. So I'm just going to do one paragraph, and I'll hit play ball, and there it is. So here's my paragraph. So I'm just going to copy this, and that's all I need from this. And I'll go back to my replit, and I'll just paste it here. And it's just going to be regular text for now. And it's a string, and I'm not sure why everything's indented there when I pasted it in here. But I'm going to make it a variable. So I'm going to call it, if you look here, paste it, and then assign it to a variable named bbText. So I'm going to say bbText equals, and then I'm going to put all of this in quotes. And remember, you could highlight everything and put it in quotes. And I'm not sure what's happening with why that's indented like that. That's kind of odd. So I guess I'll just leave it like that for now. Anyway, this is a, a one large kind of block of text. It's a string. It's one large string. So what we're going to do next with this string, we already did that. So we did all these bullet things here. So we're almost done. Here's the deal. We can count how many words are in this, but that would take a long time. But we already learned how to count spaces. So let's start with that. Let's start with what we know. We're going to count spaces in here. And there's two different ways to count spaces. And we'll try one with a for loop. And then we'll try a count to do that. We could do it both ways just to see if one's more accurate. So after this, after I, I go after this string here, it says create a counter variable for spaces. So this is the way we'll do it with a for loop. Spaces equals 0. I think I'm doing this right. For i in bb text. Now remember this is is a variable and it's a string so I'm just going to say for i in bb text so it's going to iterate through that and what I'll do next is I'll put an if statement and I'll say if it's a space so I'll say if I'll say i because that's what it's iterating through I'll say if i equals equals and then a space and remember you have to put a space in between the quotes so if it's a space what we're going to do and that has to be indented again. We're not going to print out the spaces because we don't want to see, see the spaces. But what we want to do, we're just going to count. So we'll just say spaces, and we could just do plus or equals 1. So we'll just add to itself as we do this. So that's all we're going to do is just count spaces. So now we're going to add up spaces. And then after this, we're going to go back to the margin. I think I, I use a term like outdent or something. So we're going to print that out, and we're going to just print out spaces. So we're going to print spaces. So that should just give us a number of how many spaces are in there. So we're at this point. We're at number four here. And we don't know the word count yet, but we're also going to try a word count as well. But we'll do print spaces, and we'll hit run. And it says 68. So there's 68 spaces in here. So that means there should be, when we, do, when we try to count words, and there should be one more because... We won't have a space at the beginning, so it's all the spaces in between. So there should be like 69 words when we go to do this. So that's one way to count spaces. So we just did a, a for loop. And an easier way, just to try another method here, and we did it last time, was a count. 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to do something like it says in number five. We're going to do BB text, and we're going to do a count method. And remember, for a method, we have to do dot count. So I have to put that in there. And what we're going to count is spaces. So I could put the space in here. So this will count spaces. And then we could print out this whole thing if we want and just wrap print around everything. So that should print out the count instead of using a variable. We could make a variable called number of spaces. But what this should do when we run this, it should print out spaces. And this should be the same amount. And let's just see what happens here. And it says 68, 68. What that means is it took us five lines to do that, and it took us one line to do that. So this method, which I could just put here is the, you know, the count method, was a lot quicker. As long as you remember how to do that, you could certainly make a variable that represents the count method and then print it out after that. That would still be a lot quicker, but we put it all together here and just did the count method. So again, we're running the count method on that string, and then we're just looking, counting the amount of these in here. So it went through there. So that works. So this is as accurate as that with less code. And that would kind of tell us we probably have 69 words in here if we're getting 68 spaces. And then at number six, what we're going to do here, and this will give us a true word count, is we're going to make a variable first, and then we're going to split it. And now split is, is a method that will actually kind of split up a string. So that means it'll make all of these things elements of a list. So I'll just go here and say BB list, And I'm just calling it list because we're making it into a list. And then the list is going to be set to the value of bbText.split. And what should happen here is it should hold that. Because if we just split it, it's not going to be permanent. So we want to hold it in BB list. So that new list will actually be BB text split up because we'll still have this. This will stay the way it is. We can't change a string into a list, but we can split it up and then have a new list called BB list. So that's what we're doing here. So that's what we're doing right here with this split. And if you want to see what the result is, let's just print it out because otherwise you won't see any results. So we're going to print out BB list just to see what kind of came out from it. So I'll move this up here so we could see it a little better. So let me move this up temporarily. And there's our 68 spaces, 68 spaces. And now we have a brand new list called BB list. And you could see what it did. It actually used spacing or, or white space as the separator. That's why there's actually periods that are in here. It keeps the periods in there. It doesn't separate them. But here's, here's period after gapper and period after 463. So these are all baseball terms here. And what you can also do, we mentioned about a word count. And we were just saying, oh, well, if there's 68, there's probably 69 words. Well, let's just see. Let's print out at the end of this. We're just going to print out length. And we'll throw it all together in a print statement. We'll print out the length of our list right after we print out the list. So let me run this again and move it up here. And there it is. And there's my 68, 68. There's my BB list. And there's 69. So it's counting 69 words in there. So just to review, the way we counted words is we took this whole paragraph and use the split method and split them all up into separate elements of a list and counted it. Now there's many ways to do this, but this is just one way. We're trying to get more relevant with this stuff. I know it's kind of, these are kind of monotonous kind of exercises here, but we're gonna start pulling things from text files and writing a text file. So this is just a little introduction to some of those things that we can do to actually kind of go through data. And that's what we're starting to learn to do is actually kind of go through data and analyze it a little bit more. All right, so back to here, we just did the split and we got a list and then we printed out the length so the last thing that it says to do here is search for the word base in your text or another word fragment. So this is all baseball stuff. Now, I'm not sure if this one will work as well. I don't know if there's a lot of words based in there or, or other things in here. I'm not even sure what's in here because every time you go through to do that baseball ipsum, it's a different thing. But there's probably some base things in there. Maybe there's only, there should be at least a couple in here. So let's see what happens. And we could always try a different word. But down here under instructions, it says for word in now that's, we usually do that with a for loop, but keep in mind there's also the in operator that you can also use. So if you could say if something is in something, I don't think we've done that yet, but what we could do here is just try this out and I'll just type it myself. I could copy it there, but what I really want to do here is I want to write this for loop and I'm just going to say for, we usually say for I, but we can use for word, although you can use I if you want, but we're going to say for word that's more correct as far as what we're looking for. We're going to say for word in BB list. So in this list that we're, we just made, we're going to say for word in there. So it's going to cycle through there. And then before we print anything out, we're going to say, okay, if 
whatever word we want to look up. So if we want to say, and what this in does is it actually looks for something that's a subset. So you can look for something in a subset. So in this list that's down here of all these words, we're going to look for something called base, and it's either in a word or the whole word itself. So we're going to say if base in. Now we haven't used that before, but we're saying if base is in there. We're not saying if it's equal to anything. We're saying if it's in there, if it's in word. So all the words that it goes through, it's going to go through all the words in that list. And if base is in that word, then we actually want to print it out. Now we, we can also count it too, but right now we're just going to print it out. So we're going to print out word because that's what we're printing out. So we're, we're searching for words in BBList. We're going through all the words. And then if base is in a word, we're going to print out that word. So let's see what happens here. We should get a couple words with base in it. And we get 69 was our amount of words. We got baseball and base. That's all we got. Maybe there's some others here that would come up a lot. I get maybe bat or something. You could see if bat's in here. How many times bat's in there? We could run that. And we get batter and we get at bat. So we get that in there. So that's all you have to do for that one is just go through this stuff here. And then when you're done, just submit it. And that's it. And that's our, I think that's our fifth one or maybe the sixth one we've done out of these uh, replit assignments so far. So the next ones we do are going to have some files in them, some additional files that we're going to work with. But that's it for EX23 for our baseball text.